Now, if you have a situation where you've got uh, a block being dragged across the surface and there's a yeah. string on it and then there's a pulley and there's something hanging off, like th this might be, a, I don't know, if, is this one of your problems right now? I'm not sure, but you'll get a problem like this. So here's some solid, fixed, unmoving surface. Okay, and then here's some kind of a block. Okay, and it has a certain mass, we'll call that M1. And there's a certain coefficient of sliding friction there, or it could be kinetic friction. You could have a problem that involves kinetic, or a static or kinetic friction. And then we have a pulley right here. So you got a string that goes like this. And maybe this is M2, okay? And you may w have a question where it says, what is the acceleration of the system? Or, um, you know, what, or, or maybe it's a, they give you the acceleration and you have to solve for one of the masses, or you have to solve for the coefficient of friction. I don't know, you know, they can ask just about anything. But um, what you've been doing to this point on a lot of these kinds of problems is this. Okay, now, now please everybody watch this because you're gonna, you're gonna get problems like this. I'm gonna save you a lot of time. One way to do it is to draw a separate free body diagram of this object and of this object. And then of course you'll have two uh, equations then and two unknowns. One of the unknowns is the acceleration maybe. The other uh, unknown might be the tension in the string. But there is a trick you can do where you don't need to find the tension in the string. Instead of two equations and two unknowns, you can do it with one equation and one unknown. Make it a lot easier. And that is you combine the whole thing into one free body diagram. And what I do is I, um, I draw the free body diagram, and I, but with the pulley, I st in my imagination, I straighten out the free body diagram. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this, this whole thing right here is going to be one object. But what does this pulley do? It, it bends the force, it, it just changes the direction of the tension force in the string. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to swing, in my imagination, I'm going to swing this out like this. Maybe make the string a little bit shorter. So here's M2, here's M1. Okay, and, I, and this is now my free body. This whole thing together is my free body. Now let's draw the forces acting on my free body. I, I need a direction, X and Y axis system. Now watch this. Let's take a look at M1. M1 has a force of gravity, M1 times G. It has a normal force, we'll call that N1, and it has a friction force, like this. Let's, let's suppose that it's moving in this direction, and so um, uh, the kinetic friction will oppose the direction of motion. If it's sliding to the left, the force of friction will be to the right. Now, let's take a look at this object. What is the force of gravity on this object? Well, it's pulling it down, right? Gravity is pulling this thing down, but what have I done in my imagination? I've straightened this thing out. So, the force of gravity on this is now like this, m2 times g. It's now in the negative x direction. Okay. Now, everybody take a look at this. This is my free body diagram. Notice that uh, what force have I not drawn on the free body diagram? The tension force. And the reason is because it's internal to my free body. That is, oh, okay, yeah, there's a tension force acting on M2, but there's an equal and opposite tension force on M1. So if, if it's all in the same free body diagram, they cancel each other out, so you don't even bother to draw them. Those are called internal forces. Those are forces that are internal to the free body, uh, free body that you've drawn, so they cancel each other out. So 
so it's not even in the equation anymore. You, you had a question? No, I was thinking with portals. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, don't think with portals. Now, um, so, so anyway, the, the thing you have to do in your imagination is to realize that this M2 times G, since it was hanging down, but in your imagination now, we're straightening it out. It's kind of like, well, look, the weight of this, I think you'll agree with me that the weight of this object is transferred through the, the tension of the string to pull this thing to the left. So um, now you can uh, write an equation. Uh, I can sum the forces, whoops, sum the forces in the, uh, let me zoom out a little bit so I keep everything on there. I can sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction. And so I'm going to have the force of friction minus m2 times g equals uh, uh, ma. Oh, now here's the trick though. Here's one thing you got to realize. Equals ma. What does this m represent? It represents the mass of my free body. So what is the mass of my free body in this situation? Yeah, it's M1 plus M2, exactly. So it's M1 plus M2. And that's something that you have to remember to do. Is that Newton's second law right here, this M is the total mass that's being accelerated in your, you know, in your system that you've put together. And so this is times A. Now you've got an equation that you can work with. You can solve for whatever unknown. Oh, uh, remembering that the force of friction, you know, F is equal to mu times the normal force. And here's mu up here. But what is the normal force here? It's just N1. And N1 is equal to M1 times G. In this situation, there's no incline or anything here. So you can put this into that equation. And now you've got an equation you can solve based on what's given. You can solve for whatever unknown you have. Uh, and uh, you've solved the problem much uh, more easily, much more quickly than if you drew a separate free body diagram for this or a separate free body diagram you know, for the two of them and then you know, solve the equation simultaneously. So I think uh, on the take home test, there's a, couple, uh, there's a problem where this may be uh, a, a handy thing to do. You don't have to do it this way. It just saves you a lot of time. Any questions on this? Straightening out the free body diagram, very powerful. I think on the, I think that there was one that looked something like this, right? Where you've got like a brick right here and then there's a pulley. And you've got you know, a mass over here and a mass over here. Well, now you can straighten out the free body diagram and now it has three masses in it. And, and, and uh, now, and you just treat it just like this, only it's a little bit more complicated. All right, good luck.